what? We are doing this. Scatia ham. Saturday, Melendio. I'm joking. <laughs> Where did these niggas be at when they say they going out this and all that? Tired of beefing you bones, you can't even pay me enough to react. Been waking up in the crib, but sometimes I don't even know where I'm at. Please don't pay that nigga songs in this party, I can't even listen to that. Anytime that I write into somebody, it must be a victory lap. Okay. Okay. So, firstly, if you can hear the echo, I'm shooting in my balcony, so apologies for that. Um, there's nothing that I can do about it and there's nothing that you can do about it. So just focus on my voice and be entertained. Danko. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or I can say welcome to my channel if it's your new time joining my family. Please make sure that you click the subscribe button and you join my beautiful family. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much baby for returning back. We are again now Tanta okay so as you've seen by the title of today i'm going to be answering some questions that you guys asked me i did post on my instagram and here on my youtube community um for you to ask me anything and a lot of people actually um had similar questions so we will just get straight into it i'm having mango juice and soju and i actually bought some chips that i want to try before we start answering the questions okay Okay, so these are the chips that I bought. It's called, it's corn chips, right? Obviously, I can't read the name of the chips because it's written in Korean, but these are the chips and let us try. I actually always struggle to open my chips, Alana. I don't know why. Bombastic side eye. Okay. They taste like snappers, but with no salt. Like, it was more as my snappers. You get the taste, like the chicken flavor snappers, but they have no salt. Like, I, they have salt, but it's like just the bare minimum. Not bad. Hmm. They're not bad. Okay. All right, okay, let's get to the video. So I wrote the questions here because I obviously posted on my Instagram and on my YouTube. So it will just make it easy for me to have a paper where I can read all the questions. And yeah, so the first question says, how are you adjusting to South Korea? So Michelle asked me that question. So I am adjusting pretty well. I actually expected myself to feel more lonely or um, to just be confused about the new environment and the new way of living but I'm actually adjusting pretty fast and pretty well I think also having um, having my little community and the friends that I've made from South Africa it's really really helping because um, I feel like I'm not alone I feel like I'm not experiencing this new thing alone and it just it gives me comfort yeah so I'm adjusting really really well and then the second question is how much did it cost to make the move okay so yo sana um mm. all I can say is it is a lot of money like starting from police clearance to guys isn't they like taking an uber from your home to the police that's money 
that you need right so i actually did record everything like every little cent that i spent so i'm just going to insert a picture maybe here of everything but i think it was around about 45,000, 40,000. Also, I'm including my flight money there. I'm including everything, right? I also used um, Doc Assist. So I needed to pay Doc Assist to um, do my documents for me. So that was another money. So I think I roughly spent 40,000, 45,000 maximum, okay? The third question is how has Korea been so far? Okay, so. The second question I was asked by Uafiga. The third question I was also asked by Uafigile saying, How has Korea been so far? It has been amazing. Like, it was exactly what I expected it to be. I think I also um, watched a lot of videos, like YouTube videos, or vlogs of people exposing the South Korean life, you know, to us. So when I came here, it was exactly what I expected, you know. Um, I don't want to say I'm used to everything now. I'm not used to it because um, I know for a fact that when I go, like when I go shopping or when I even like step outside my apartment, I know that okay, Wendy, you need to prepare yourself because people are going to stare at you you know they're not used to black people here so just lower your anxiety put your head up and just continue with your day and I think that's something that I've gotten used to so much um, because I just know when I'm standing in Robotini, when I'm waiting for the bus, when I'm walking, I know that who's just going to be staring you know when you can feel that people are staring at you but I'm slowly getting used to that. Um, other than that, my schools are great. My students are amazing. I think the environments that I just work in, it's just making everything easier because go get bush, go get So I'm really, really grateful for that. And I have amazing co-teachers. So it's just making my stay in South Korea very, very easy and um, very enjoyable. Yeah. Okay, so Umis Dedane said, how are you adjusting to life in South Korea and are there groove spots? I mean, I get genuinely concerned. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I did answer the first question, Etty. How are you adjusting to life in Korea? I'm adjusting very, very well. Um, I haven't experienced any homesickness. I haven't experienced anything that made me feel like an alien, if I can say that, you know? Okay, and the second question was, are there any groove spots? Definitely, um, you will see with my second video that I uploaded, I'll link it right, right here or here. Um, we went to, no, it was actually the first video um, of me coming to Jeju, we went to the bar and it was pretty chilled. Like it was cool, they, they, there are people who play my piano, there are people who play music that I'm used to. Um, I haven't explored much in, in terms of the groove spots. I've just went to that one only, but I know that this coming weekend, it's gonna be up, mommy. Kuso. Kuso. <laughs> if you know the whole phrase, that's a passenger. Kuso. So, Jay, look out for that vlog. It's definitely going to be lit. I'm telling you, we're going to another bar. I think Lana, they, they have clubs and bars, you know, but um, I've been to a bar and I know that next week we're going to a bar, so... Am I recording? And then there is another question from Flora. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Flora asked me, assuming you are still in Jeju Island, what is it like living on an island? Okay, so okay, so the reason why I preferred living in Jeju Island was because I am a lover of the ocean. I am a lover of a place that is humid. But I think I came to Jeju while it was still winter, like the end of winter. So I haven't really explored much, you know, 
like I haven't seen much in the island because it's cold and I'm still just trying to adjust and find a schedule on how to work with my job and stuff but living in an island it's pretty good it's not um it's not congested like it's not it's not full it's not full like the mainland you know you definitely feel like you have your own personal space and my apartment is pretty big um yeah so it's it's amazing and i see the ocean at night in the morning midday lost found walking crossing i see the ocean so i'm just in my serenity era like i don't want to lie to you you know it's just a breath of fresh air every day okay and then um janita asked me what is your work schedule like and how are you coping with it okay so i have my main school and my travel school in my main school i go on mondays tuesday no in my main school i go on tuesday wednesday and friday and then in my travel school i go on mondays and thursdays right so it's it was at first I was very very lost like I felt like I have a double job it still feels like I have a double job because they the two schools both require different lesson plans I'm teaching different grades I have like I think nine core teachers and they all have different teaching styles and I feel like it's just pressure to me and everything feels new because I will create a lesson plan and one co-teacher will say this is brilliant this is great I love your lesson and I will create another lesson plan and then this teacher will say I'm spending too much time on practice I need to focus on productivity <laughs> to summarize the whole thing, a colula. A colula. But um I think I think what's helping is the fact that every time when I pull up in my classes, my students are always bringing the A game. They always understand my lessons, they always participate, and I've just decided to work on my students' reaction. So I evaluate my whole week over team. So which lesson plan um, worked best with my students? Like, which lesson did my students pa participate more in? Because my lesson focus on my co-teacher, it's a I'm feeling focus on the lesson plan, it's a good you understand? So my work schedule is just crazy. My work life is crazy. Um, I travel a lot because my travel school is like one hour and 30 minutes away from me. So I travel every Monday and Thursday. And then I travel going to my home school, which is like 20 minutes away from me. So that's not bad. But just understanding and adjusting with a lot of co-teachers has been a hard job. I don't want to lie to you. I'm full of extra strong. I'm full of extra tough. It's been a roller coaster. It still is a roller coaster, but I'm just grateful for um, the, the my surroundings. I'm grateful for the positivity that I have in my life because I can vent to my parents about anything. I can vent to my friends. I know what if I had a bad day, my family apartment, I have Tamile, I have Unutani, but who I can talk to. And the amazing part is I think it's just a little thing but it matters the most when i come back to my apartment i don't have to speak english right i have a community where when i'm angry i can bang understand and when i get in my room it literally feels like i've offloaded everything that thing stress guess zulu because i think also what would frustrate me is having a bad day then coming back and have to explain my bad day in english Hi. And then Christy asked me, what was the most 
difficult in your first week in Korea? Transportation. Getting lost. Stairs. Kuning, kuning. Okay, number one, transportation. So I use the bus to go to my schools. I use the, I, I genuinely use the bus to get anywhere in the island, right? And the bus confused me for the most part. I, the first week I got lost so many times. And the language barrier does not help. Like the language barrier makes everything worse. Because now I'm lost and I can't even ask for directions. I can't even ask what la 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 gifuna uya language high school. I I can't. I can't do that. You just have to see it through, my boy. Even in this life, I saw it through. Like the first book of Korea <laughs> showed me flames, Gesana. La la la. I got lost and I found myself in the middle of nowhere. I found myself in the sea. But you know what? I conquered. And you conquer. Conquer. You get me? And I conquered shit. And every day when I wake up, I'm like, you know what? And it always gets better, guys. Like, I think you it always gets better. Like, everything gets better. I'm used now to things. I'm used to. So it's just it's those little things because when you are using transport at home, dude, you don't care. You know that was a figure we are going to get me. And my solar thing you can just ask someone. Lana, you need to be vigilant about everything because one wrong move, you stranded. One wrong move, you feel like you're alone. One wrong move, you're in the middle of nowhere. And go back, be, go back, be. Do you get me? So it was tough. It was tough, but I wasn't alone. I have friends. I have a community here, so I wasn't alone. And we just laughed it through. <laughs> <laughs> we just laughed it through hey we learned we laughed and we moved and that's just what we are basically doing in south korea to get around to get around so yeah okay so we've done with the general questions of moving to south korea we're done with um just anything that has to do with south korea okay so now we're going to the dating parts you guys asked me a lot of questions about dating and I'm going to unpack everything now. So the first one from Uzama says, are you attracted to Korean men? Yes. Yes, I am attracted to Korean men. Let's close the topic now. Thank you. And Umbali asked me, are you open to dating Korean men? Yes, I am open to dating Korean men. If the opportunity comes, I definitely will explore that sector. And Utabi asked me, uh, have you started dating in Korea? I just arrived. I just arrived. I just arrived. I don't know who's inside. I just arrived. Guys, I don't even have four weeks in South Korea. You're like already asking me about as home cholo. It is your yummy very fragile in Dasi. And I haven't found a copy machine for it is your yummy in South Korea. So no. <laughs> I haven't started anything. I just arrived. Like literally, I just arrived. Like I'm not in a talking stage. <laughs> for everything that has to do with dating I just arrived do you get me? do you get me? yes Utabi that says are you open to doing story times? you look like a great storyteller 
definitely that's one of the sectors that we are going to open in my youtube channel story time i will have story times it's just that I'm still settling down guys i'm still finding my feet in south korea i'm still meeting people i'm still trying to you know just explore the place we will have story times on my channel and you don't want to miss that you don't want to miss that if you know me you know what when i'm telling a story i will tell it every detail you will know right you will know and you will be entertained you will be entertained in the sun. So you better not miss it, right? You better. And then the next question from Uemile says, How was the experience like between UKZN and UP? Which one would you choose? Okay, so if you don't know, I went to the University of UKZN. What the hell? Guys, don't blame me, blame Soju, please, because I don't know what I just said. I went to the University of KwaZulu Natal and I did my bachelor's there. And then last year, I was doing my PGCE in the University of Pretoria. So I went to two different universities. Okay, so Emily is asking me what was my experience with both the universities and so see this soon. Emily is asking me what are the differences. So to the sun, one gonna have an individual. Oh, Emmy, it's asking me a different parts where you can say the NAUP, and we are the boss of voting in a ketaib. Get up and get a new smith. We are boss of voting in a ketaib. We are about. So when I was in UKZN, um, I only experienced actually one year in UKZN, like attending face-to-face -to -face classes. And then the other two years, it was COVID time. So I was studying in Lini. So I really didn't um, experience much about UKZN. I did make a lot of friends on in, 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 in my first year, amazing friends that I'm still in contact with today. The lecturing and the, the, the environment there, um, is amazing. In Kasekai, everyone speaks Zulu. Um, you know, it just it felt like home. It was home. Okay, so yeah, that's that's it's about UKZN. And then UP UP is in Joburg, right? So I was exposed to a different environment for the first time in my life. I was alone for the first time in my life. So. I think that really channeled a lot of different levels of maturity because I needed to be responsible I needed to understand what I'm here to study and um, that's the only main focus okay UP is amazing I lived in Hatfield amazing year of my life I also had an amazing community there met a lot of people up in general the education there is amazing the lecturers the environment even though i did experience a little a little bit of a language barrier because they were speaking is pitoli it's a so too you know and i couldn't understand that because i'm zulu if you didn't know so um i had to learn you know i had to um understand actually their way of living because it's different from kzn and i'm grateful for that experience because i think it's it has made my um my growth and my transition from south africa to south korea really easily because i last year i was living alone i was basically alone so i learned how to be responsible i learned how to take care of myself how to um guard myself and how to actually survive in a in a foreign place right so i think that step really made this step that i'm in right now living in south korea very very easy so we all going to have different experiences we all not going to experience the same thing but i can definitely say would see up gave me the five star that i expected right up the environment had filled everything it was amazing so it's definitely up and i'm not degrading uk zone for any matter i'm just saying good i didn't experience much about uk zone because being found out during lockdown and i was at home so it just 
like I have nothing to say about your case at the end. I have nothing bad or nothing good to say about your case at the end. It was it was tough for your case at the end. It's tough from registration to lecturers to teaching. Go tough and Jay. question was how old are you okay so i'm 21 turning 22 this year but in south korea i'm actually 22 turning 23 because um when a child is born in south korea they are automatically one years old and in south africa you start from zero so in south korea i'm 22 turning 23 and in south africa i'm 21 turning 22 okay all right, so I think we've reached the end of our questions. The last question, Gibuzwe Usine. Okay, so I think we are done. Yo, oh, this is so Jugasana. It's getting in. Alright guys, thank you so much for reaching this far in my video. Please don't forget to like this video and comment any question that you have and we will chat in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe and love this video. I love you. I know that you love me because you reached this far. I will see you on my next video. Bye. Ooh. Hey. Bamba, bamba. That man has been sitting there for quite a long time.